What's up guys, Cass here from Giveaway Studios and on this one I'm going to show you guys how to turn all the parts that you see here into this lovely scimitar inspired by Breath of the Wild. Now this is exactly what Urbosa Scimitar of the Seven looks like in game, minus the colorway. This is a custom job that I did for a client, but we're going to do the one from the game and this tutorial. Alright, let's get it. Alright, so we're going to do the easy stuff first, which is going to be uh, gluing our two millimeter pieces to our 10 millimeter handle and there's also one of these two millimeter pieces that goes to uh, this two millimeter piece that ends up wrapping around the bottom of the blade so uh, you know play mix and match grab your barge you know how it's done glue on both sides glue your pieces together and I'll catch you guys for the next step So for these guys, I'm going to go ahead and put a sharpie line on the foam and then I'm going to take this and press it up against it so that the sharpie shows up on the other side so I know where my hole is. Uh, the only reason why I do this is because some people will prefer to have the rivet, some people will prefer to not because I have seen two versions of it uh, online, one with the rivets and one without. So. This is here in case you do want to put it, that way you have something to do your registration with. So I will be ending up putting it in mine, so I'm going to cut these out and put a little um, googly eye behind it and then finish with the gluing steps. Okay, so once you have all of your parts assembled, we're going to go ahead and heat everything up so we can start shaping it. I didn't install these just yet because I know they're going to be separate colors and I wanted to make it easier for myself later on in painting. So I'm going to paint these separately and then glue them last. Uh, I'm going to record this step just in case I end up selling DIY kits for these uh, with laser cut foam. Well, you always want to sand your edges. You, you're going to have very rough uh, burnt edges with the laser cut pieces. So whatever pieces are connecting, you want to sand them down so the foam is nice and smooth. That way the glue has something to kind of seep into so it could actually make good contact. So I'm going to do that to these two edges here, all the way around this piece, same thing all the way around this piece as well. All right. All right so as you guys can see, we've shaped our pieces nice and curved. This is kind of what you want to go for here. Okay. So, you can tell from this piece, you see, this kind of has that, that curve, it looks like it has that lip down there. So now I have this on the inside here, and I'll be able to glue this, and it'll uh, angle down a little nicer and smoother, okay? So we're going to go ahead and glue these two parts together, and then I'll catch you guys for the next step. Alright, now that we got our handle connected, we're going to go ahead and sand our seams down so it's nice and smooth. Alright, so after sanding with a regular uh, sanding drum, I'm going to go ahead and use this grinding bit or a stone head and to smooth out all of the parts that I sanded and that'll be it. Okay, and now we have smoothed our parts on the edges here. We're gonna go ahead and reheat seal everything. All right, so now that this is nice and sealed and heated up, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my little googly eyes and stick them to uh, their respective places here. All right, and now for, this is part is not too difficult. It's probably the part that's gonna take you the longest. Uh, your pattern will show all of the angles that you need to cut and wear. So that's basically what I'm gonna go through uh, the steps of doing right now. All right, so I've done my cuts, just so you guys can see. Uh, I'll do a little comparison, okay. Uh, on this one, I added uh, some translucent foam in the back because I intend to have this light up. Uh, if you're following this tutorial and you're just doing it regularly uh, like it is 
in the game this actually doesn't light up it's just kind of a darker silver than everything else you can just um, trace these onto it and do the score lines with the foam and um, just color in your your pieces uh, differently when you're done yeah so that's just an FYI as to why there's white here uh, for this piece and why these are completely cut out all right in any case here you can see I have a flat edge here you can see the edge is beveled okay especially if you look at an angle here all right and also I've cleaned up the bottom part of my edge here for this little piece I have a 45 degree here on the longest part a 45 degree on the second longest part they're all facing the same direction but the other one faces the opposite direction okay so this is gonna go here and then for this piece we have a 55 degree cut here and a 45 down here if I'm not mistaken and in this one we have a 55 on the underside here this part is straight so a straight cut and then here we have a 45 degree cut and this is how everything gets assembled All right so those are the angles I'm gonna do the other pieces real quick and I'll uh, show you guys how to put this all together All right, now that I have all of my pieces cut up and I have all of my angles, I'm going to go ahead and quickly heat seal my, uh, my first half of pieces. It's like... So with heat sealing, you see how the foam is kind of changing from matte to kind of this glossed over color. That's really all we're doing in this. We're not trying to heat it too much because uh, technically we're not bending it into any type of shape we just want to seal the surface same thing here as you can see the pieces are just kind of glossing over a little bit as we're going over it with the heat gun okay that out of the way we're going to start gluing our pieces right, so first thing that I'm going to do is glue this to this, then these to this, then this whole thing to that. Um, you can glue it in any which way you want. That's just the way that's the easiest for me personally. Uh, if you want to do these two first and then these two, completely up to you. Uh, All right, so as you guys can see, we've done one half, and this is kind of what we've got going on. So we're gonna set this one aside. I'm gonna take my time and go through this one with you guys, step by step. So we're gonna grab our contact cement, and we're going to put that on our connecting edges. So in here, I have this long line here. So I'll get that. Okay, one down, here, and we get this guy, all the sides that you are connecting need to have glue, that's how contact cement works. Okay, so after I've done these three pieces, I'm going to start gluing my parts. So with this one, I'm going to start at the tip and work my way back. So here, right at the tip. Okay. As I'm gluing this, I'm making sure that my uh, surface contact points are as flush as possible. Okay. As flush as you can possibly make them. That's just going to help avoid any further sanding later on all right so i've got this part done now we're going to go for this guy so again i'm going to start at my intersection out here and let that guide where this falls like so 
and just press everything in nice make sure everything is making good contact but you always start with your surface first and then make sure the rest is good and then here we're going to put some glue on this guy this I'm not gonna start at any tips but I'm gonna start right right in the middle careful not to let the other pieces stick but I'll start right here right in the middle of this here okay. again making sure that the surface makes good contact I'm just gonna go a little bit on the long end just so it holds that there and I'm gonna focus my attention on the front. Okay. Okay. Now I've got that. I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of this going backwards. If you're worried that something is going to touch this, you can grab like an extra piece of foam and just kind of put it in between so that as you're working you kind of move the foam down until you get to the very end okay uh, so that's a, a little technique that you can use if this isn't really working out too well for you so again and then I'm going to start from the back a little bit just to make sure that everything ends up even There we have it. All right. Now we have two sides to our piece. So if you end up with like a weird chunk like this on your um, on your tip, what you can do is just either cut this flush or sand it flush. You can use a Dremel. Uh, you can use sandpaper. Whatever the case. Is. So I'm going to go ahead and do this on my belt sander. All right, so hopefully you guys can tell the difference between this one that I've sanded here on the left and this one that hasn't been worked on on the right. You see how there's just kind of like a, a, a trench there where, where they meet. It's kind of like a right angle. Uh, so you want to smooth that down just like this one so that the tips align and close shut cleanly when we glue this part. Okay, and just so there is no, oh, you're cheating, you're using machines comments okay here we go this is nice fresh blade box cutter I'm just going nice and slow cutting into my piece and making sure that my cut is flush and even with again the small edge okay got that I'm gonna go the other way now Again, you want to be really careful with, with uh, sharp blades. You don't want to cut yourself. So, if we're looking at the two, right? Obviously, this is much cleaner with the sander, but I can also finish this off with just regular sandpaper, right? And smooth that out. But you can see that I've already cut flush to my smaller edge. And if I were to glue this like this, frankly, it would be just fine because no one's gonna see this that's gonna be on the inside anyways, okay? So you can do it whether you have machinery or not, right? It's just about having the right tools, being patient, and getting it done. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and glue those two together, fast forward through that process. We got our two pieces prepped, ready to go. Uh, Again, this is one of those that can be a little tricky, so I'm going to go ahead and take my time and try to show you guys how I do this. Alright, so I got one tip down, and then another tip, and I'm just going to work my way towards one or the other. You can start, whatever, whichever one is most comfortable. Okay. Go to that one. Really try 
trying to make sure happens is that this one here ends up nicely. Just trying to make it as flush as possible. So I have to do less sanding with the seams. This isn't a step that you will be able to get perfect, even as I'm doing this now. Uh, I know that you know, there's going to be a little bit more work that needs to be done. Okay, that's it. So now I'm going to focus on this back end. And just pinch these close. Once you have one part, uh, that front part down, it becomes easier because everything's a little bit more stable um, to glue everything else. So again, I start with a little bit at the tip here. Uh, I glue that back end because what happens if, if you just try to go straight from one end to another, you might end up with a side that's longer than, you, than the other. So this is a good way to make sure that this doesn't happen. Uh, you kind of close both ends and uh, you glue the lines so that you just kind of meet in the middle. Okay, and we have that top piece right now. All right, and squeeze, making sure that everything is nice and glued down. Good. All right, now the piece de resistance. And the last of this. All right, and there we have it, folks. Blade. Okay. So. All right, blade is done seams or no longer, we have to make sure that this piece fits properly. So all I'm going to do is go ahead and heat this up. I'm just going to stretch it a little bit on all ends until it gives me the length that I need and hopefully fix the length there so that by the time you put the sword together, oh, and you make this part, it just fits. Okay. This is glued. All right, and what's going to happen is this short piece goes where this is. That's where that short piece ends up. So the very tip here was a little flobby. So what I'm going to do is just grab a pair of shears and just cut that out following the curve. It'll give me a much more sturdy tip and a nice clean look too. So as you can see. Okay. So, with this piece assembled, okay, what we're going to do is slide this in, like so, and we're going to push that in until the blade is flush to the bottom edge here. We're going to go ahead and put our handle into our handle. Now again, remember, you can use a three quarter inch PVC. This is what this, uh, the hole in the pattern was modeled for. Okay, so uh, just because you don't have this 3D printed piece doesn't mean you can't make it. It's just taking a couple of foam strips and doing some uh, curved pieces, tying them around, gluing them and making the grip as you go. All right, so with this done, what we wanna do is figure out what position this is going to sit in and just mark that general area so that we can glue uh, this little piece to the handguard itself because it's going to be painted gold so we might as well glue those two pieces together okay. and that's kind of the general area where that's going to live and now I can take this off of here, glue that in place. All right, so I'm gonna do that real quick and catch you guys when it. All right, we're starting to have the semblance of a sword. 
It's a little floppy, but we will be reinforcing this with a piece of wood on the inside in a little bit, and I'll show you guys how to do that. Okay, so before we go to the paint booth, we're gonna make a couple of um, uh, cylinders that are gonna plug our PVC tube or uh, 3D printed part. So what we're gonna do is grab the piece, put it on top of a piece of foam, press down and twist until it leaves us with an impression. Now, you can use your X-Acto blade to cut out this impression, but when you do, make sure you cut the outside line, not the inside line. You wanna make it a little larger than it needs to be so that it fits in here nice and snug, okay? And then, once you cut out, so what I'm gonna do is three of them stacked um, with a hole in the middle. And the hole in the middle is just big enough for me to fit my dowel through, okay? So with three of these, I should have enough. This is a uh, half inch dowel um, that you guys can pick up at any like Hobby Lobby or craft store or anything like that. So that's what I'm going to slide through the center of the sword and glue it on the inside so that it's sturdy. But also uh, when it goes through the handle, it has something to hold it so it's not just flopping around. All right. So uh, I have these dies here that I'm going to use to do this a lot quicker. But like I explained just a few seconds ago, you can also do this by hand with an X-Acto knife. Okay, so I'm going to fast forward through that process and catch you guys for the next step. Now I'm going to glue my pieces together. That's that. And now we're going to glue our stick to the inside of our sword. Alright, so I got my half inch dowel. And what I'm going to do is slide that in here. And I want it to kind of end right here, right at this point here. So where this line comes, if you draw a straight line down right there, because that's the point where it kind of still sits flat on this line. And you want to glue it to the flattest part of your sword. So right about here. So what I can do is go ahead and grab my marker, okay? Make a mark right under the edge there, put my um, stack here. Uh, it depends on if you did three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, for me, it matters because I need enough room inside of the handle to store my batteries so I can light this up. But if you're doing this um, without the lights, I would suggest making it as long as the handle. Uh, it's going to be more secure that way. Okay, and that's going to be where I cut it. Okay, so with my heat gun on the hottest possible setting, I have a, a variable heat, 60 and 100 watts. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put some hot glue all over. Okay, stick that in as quickly as possible. push and make sure that it's actually making contact on the inside. You want it to sit right in this slot so try to make sure that it's doing that. Alright, now we have a sturdy piece that won't go anywhere and it's not shifting when we twist it. Okay. And the surface of the uh, of your handle should sit flush with the surface of the foam on the inside here. We can slide the two into each other, hopefully. Okay. And there we go. All right? No more floppiness. You can actually swing this around now. It's pretty cool. Okay? Alright, so we have our blade have our little smaller pieces that I'm going to paint separately. I have my handle, the part that goes in here. Uh, I have my gem. Now this is 3D printed. In your patterns, you will get 
this piece and what this piece is is basically this gem deconstructed um, that you can make out of EVA foam um, to just complete the look so I'm gonna go through the steps on how to uh, pretty much get this thing to work so you see the lines that you have here um, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut adjacent to those lines at an angle creating a series of trenches Okay. Okay. So once all of this is cut out, I'm going to take my excess out from the middle of where I put all my angles. All right. So as you guys can see, I have a little triangle angle on the inside that's going to allow me to fold this out on the outside like this. Okay, so once my channels are dug out, as you can see, when I fold this over, it has the shape of a gem, right? And now all you need to do is glue these two ends to themselves, possibly do a little bit of sanding, and you can glue two of these together to create the gem that you see here. Right? So that's just a quick way on how to use this um, piece when you see it in your patterns that's what it's there for okay but I'm using my 3d printed piece because I'm going to have it light up and now this piece here is a decorative piece that is going to go around the base of your handle here and it's going to face upwards like this so it's gonna look something like that but what you want to do with this one is you want to have a slight angled cut here very subtle not too much maybe about 25 degrees or so uh, as opposed to this flat area that you see here so I'm hoping you guys see this on camera that this is a little beveled compared to this one and what that's going to allow uh, to happen is when this folds as you can see the top here becomes flat because of that angle as opposed to this one where when I fold it it's it's facing inwards so basically all I'm doing is chopping off like this much at that angle so that it can sit flush on the underside of this piece so I'm gonna go ahead and glue this together stick it there and I'll catch you guys for the next all right so I think we are ready for paint finally at this point so I will catch you guys for that all right so in the paint booth I have all my stuff prepped I have my handle that's gonna be here again um, you can download this from givewavestudios.com the STL so you can 3d print it yourself if you have 3d printer or you can just use a one inch PVC cut to whatever length you'd like and make that work as well and just put some uh, foam decorative pieces on it right one way or another it's a DIY kit so you know you guys got to get creative with it um, that said I'm going to grab a piece of tape and I'm gonna put it sticky side facing up and I'm gonna arrange my pieces that I'm going to be uh, gluing later to the main handle part separately that way they don't blow away while I am painting them. All right, so I've got that. Okay, so now for my uh, painting process. These are gonna be red, these are gonna be green. Uh, I'm gonna use some filler primer on my handle. This Design Master Gold is one of the best golds I've ever used for prop making. It doesn't even, uh, it lasts and looks so good it doesn't even need a clear coat on top of it actually i don't think they suggest to put a clear coat but design master 24 character gold use this rust-oleum paint and primer it's like a aluminum type of color that's going to be for the main blade the triple thick uh crystal clear glaze from krylon is amazing for uh, 3d parts you only need one or two coats and it completely smooths everything out and you guys will see uh, the before and after and of course before doing any painting I will be plasti dipping 
all of my foam pieces to seal the foam and allow for a nice clean surface for me to put my paint on. All right, so now that I've explained what paints are being used for what, I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward through painting everything. You guys know which colors to use and I'll catch you guys for the next step. All right, now that we've painted all of our pieces, so we have a nice shiny gold on the handle, nice bright silver on the blade itself. So I'm just gonna go ahead and glue these pieces into place with my contact cement. And I'm also gonna paint these green, as I think that's the other color that these are, these are green. All right, so my part is nice and painted. Now I'm going to go ahead and move on to adding my lights. So I have some fairy lights here. And what I'm gonna do is basically measure out uh, the length of where the light needs to be. So as you can see from here to here, I folded it onto itself as many times as it is long. And I'm gonna stuff all of that in there. So. You guys can definitely skip this part if you are not doing your prop with lights. If you are, continue watching and I'll show you how it is that I do it. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of twist it onto itself after I've done all of my wrapping and I'm just gonna like stuff it in there. Slide that in. Ooh, okay, we're done. Uh, so lesson to be learned here. If you're going to do lights the way that I'm doing it, uh, don't get a really, really long strip of uh, fairy lights. Just get like a, a short one, like a one meter or two meter one. Uh, that'll be more than enough to get the lights to show through the plastis out here on the inside. So as you can see, turn it on. All right, things are turning on and not. All right. In any case, so now next step is going to be to basically put everything together. So I'm going to, all right, that looks good. And now what I'm going to do is run my wire through my handle. So it comes out the other end. And I'm going to go ahead and bring this close. And I'm going to plug, I'm going to insert the plug on the inside. Okay, once your plug is in, you're gonna go ahead and just slide your sword in place, making sure that your blade is facing the handle. Okay. And then now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and slide my battery in. Uh, these are called uh, lipstick uh, power banks. I have can go inside of the gem nice and hidden and there we have it so I'm gonna go ahead and add a light to the bottom gem okay, got my fairy light pack so this is kind of the length that you want the one that I used earlier for the blade was kind of overkill something like this would have been just fine um, so I'll have links to that in the description instead of that massive roll that I used earlier. Uh, but super easy for this to happen here. Just kind of grab your hands, roll it around your hand. Okay. Once you've got that, go ahead and slide your piece into your gem. Voila, Arbosa's Scimitar of the Seven with light up details and light up gem. Okay. And uh, I will have uh, the handle and the 
gem as freebies on GiveWithStudios.com in case any of you guys have a 3D printer that you can access so that you can print this and make this yourself. So yeah, that's it guys. Here it is, Herbosis Scimitar of the Seven. Uh, I hope this one was useful. Hope you guys were able to learn through the process of this tutorial. Uh, if you've purchased the DIY kit or the patterns from my website, thank you so much. It means a lot. I appreciate the support. And um, if you guys have any questions or concerns, um, as usual, feel free to leave them in the comment section. I try to get back to you guys as much as possible. And yeah, that's it. This has been Cast from Giveaway Studios, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Cheers.